Hi, uh, Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. Uh, this is uh, uh, the first in what's probably going to be a series of videos to show the tilt shift lenses. And it's actually in response to uh, a comment on uh, one of my Shine Fluke uh, videos where uh, somebody had said that they really enjoyed the video but they would have liked to see some kind of results from the movements, maybe on the ground glass. Uh, and so this is the first stage of rectifying that as well. And I agree with the guy. I hate it when you get photography videos and they don't show the images. Uh, in fairness to me, uh, there wasn't really um, an image being shot in that video. It was tr literally just about the idea of the shine fluke. So I'm, I'm going to go over that again uh, here. And uh, I'm actually I'm talking to the um, A7R, the A7R Mark II. Uh, but I've set up the Sony A6000 to uh, video as well, so I can show you uh, one aspect of the shine fluke principle. Now what I've done is I've set this vase up here, and the A6000 is filming along this line. Well, it's filming kind of quite close to the vase. That's an 80mm lens on there. I've opened the aperture on the 80mm lens right up, and this is an f1.9. So it's uh, got a pretty shallow depth of field, and that's really what I want to uh, demonstrate. So let's just have a little thing. Oh, by the way, uh, I've put the hot filter uh, on the front of the lens on the Sony A6010, changed it to auto white balance, and it will record this uh, in standard color. Um, pretty nifty, because you remember that that's the camera that I had converted for full spectrum. Anyway, let's get into this. So, remember that the shine fluke principle is in two parts. Um, most camera, most 35mm size cameras, medium format cameras, uh, operate on one aspect of the shine fluke, which is that if the film or sensor plane, uh, the lens plane, and the image plane are all parallel to each other, then uh, the image will be in focus within the bounds of the depth of field for that lens. And of course this is very shallow. Now what I've done is, and I'm going to come out and show you the planes in, uh, in just a moment, I'll use a card down here. But I've deliberately angled this vase and this, re this rim of the vase along here is my uh, image plane. This is, this is what I want to get into, uh, into focus along here. Now, the second aspect of the shine fluke principle is that if those three planes are not uh, in, uh, in uh, parallel, then they have to all meet at a point. Those three planes must come together at a point, in which case you'll then be able to get uh, your image plane in focus. Uh, it won't be a flat uh, plane across now, it'll be the plane that you've chosen, and I've chosen this plane through here. So let's, uh, let's have a little look at that. I've got uh, something down here I can use. Hmm. Easier to get that, <laughs> more easier to say that I'll get that uh, than I thought, very dusty. Okay, so down here, here is the image plane, and you can see it's going off in that direction. Okay, now let me come out from behind here and show you the, so the image plane is coming off in this direction, remember, okay. The sensor plane is actually in that direction, okay. So you, if you can kind of draw a line with your eye to here, a line to here, and if that plane is going to be in focus, then I have to turn the lens in that direction. Okay, now I've oriented my uh, Myrex adapter, right? So the, I've actually turned this through 90 degrees so that I get a side to side uh, tilt. Now, in large format parlance, that would be a swing. Okay, so I'm actually swinging this lens from side to side, and you can see I've taken the plane from uh, here and just turned it like this. And if you draw your eye across here, and I think you should see that those three planes are more or less coming to a point out here somewhere, okay? And because they do, that rim 
is in nice sharp focus. Now I've actually tilted that lens seven degrees. Right, so it's tilted that way seven degrees, and I can get up to uh, twelve degrees, I think, or eleven, something like that. So quite a lot of uh, variation available to me there. Okay, now what I'm going to do just to finish this video off, um, pop that there. I'm unlikely to be in focus back here, of course, but anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, swing this lens back to zero then I might uh, just have to reposition my uh, view so that I get the rim of the glass back into the frame and what I'm hoping we'll see is that what's now a reasonably sharp uh, plane there will become uh, unsharp uh, for most of it because let's, let's just do that and see now this is going to wobble it's one of the things that I've noticed let me go back over here so you can see me uh, just before I do that then, one of the things I've noticed about the A6000, and I haven't had a chance to investigate a solution to this, but when I put it on a tripod, uh, its tripod mount really is not stable, <laughs> one little bit wobbles like a good one if you touch it. Um, so that's really a problem, and one way that I might uh, solve that is to put uh, a battery holder on the bottom and possibly uh, a right angle bracket although I'm not intending to shoot in the vertical format. It's not really a format that I like very much. Uh, I need to do something about this, uh, this wobble. At the moment, uh, I'm using cable release and, uh, and not, you know, touching the camera is not my kind of way anyway, but uh, it is a problem. So when I, when I move this um, angle of tilt back to zero, you will see a lot of wobble. I'll let it calm down and reframe and then uh, see what we see. Okay, so let's have a look. All right, so into here. So I'm going to just push that Myrex back. I do need to uh, reframe that. So there is uh, the reframe. Just check that. And sure enough, uh, it's not clear to me exactly what's in focus, but. Uh, somewhere towards the middle of the rim I would say and the two corners are well and truly out of focus. I'm going back over here again and just to say that that's a short quick little demo I'll bring those two pieces of video together in uh, Premiere uh, but just a quick short video to show you the uh, the effect. So now that I've moved that lens back the sensor plane and the lens plane are both parallel so they aren't uh, going to come into focus for this plane that we started with. So because they're parallel, the plane of sharp focus is now going to be uh, parallel to them, so somewhere through here. And then your depth of field is forwards and backwards. And I think what I'm seeing is a sharp focus sort of in here. And then because that's a lens that's wide open at f1.9, the depth of field is probably from about here to about here, right? So pretty, pretty shallow, and the corners uh, are both soft and noticeably soft. So I hope that gives you uh, a picture of what the uh, tilt function can do in terms of the shine fluke principle. Uh, I hope that you get to see uh, a little of the shine fluke principle in action there, and what uh, what that difference looks like. I will make more videos uh, about uh, both the shine fluke principle, its application to these lenses, uh, and one one thing in particular is that we we set this up there to give a nice sharp plane along the image plane. Don't have to do that. At the moment, I've got this area here in focus. I could uh, turn that whole mount round and tilt it in the other direction get this in sharp focus and really throw these corners out of focus because then my plane of sharp focus is going in this direction okay and you, your, your, your depth of field is going like that okay so you don't have to manipulate your lens to give you a sharpness across a plane you can actually tilt it in, in as it were the wrong direction 
and shift the plane of of sharp focus around so that it's not matching the plane of your uh, object and then you are really pinpointing right in. I'm going to show that idea actually when uh, with the uh, 10 by 8 I'm going to set these cameras up to view the ground glass screen and show because the 10 by 8 has way more movement so it's um, it's much better to show you the shine fluke than the tilt shift lenses but I wanted to show the action of the tilt shift that you don't need actually very much uh, tilt that I've pushed this right the way around here this is a long way around um, so more to come on that more to come on the shine fluke principle and I also want to show you when I'm out in the field at some point the um, left middle right uh, three shot panorama using the shift function of the tilt shift lens but I hope that's been of some interest and you've at least seen the action of the hot filter on the converted camera uh, and look out for more I am going to do some further videos uh, in the near future on the shine fluke and tilt shift lenses and all the rest of it thanks very much for watching I hope that's been of some interest bye for now